Welcome everybody. I'd like to invite you to this year's 2023 Farm Journal Corn Soybean College. It'll be held here at our campus July 25th, 26th here at Hayworth. The theme for this year's college is change is the name of the game. Now you guys deal with change all the time. Change in weather conditions, change in government regulations, government programs, changes in fertilizer prices, changes in labor force, changes in equipment. It's happening all the time around you. And your ability to adjust to those changes makes a big difference in your ROI, whether you can keep it together. So today, uh, as we think about what we need to do for the future in agriculture, I think if we need to be able to adapt to this change. So that's what we'll be doing here at the Corn College event. We'll be giving you the tools that you need to implement change uh, going forward that can keep you into the ball game. And whether that'll be climate smart type farming or whether that may be looking for uh, more efficient ways to manage your fertilizer dollars, your pesticide dollars to come out uh, with the margins that you're looking for. So as we work through the event, we'll have a lot of different teaching opportunities. We'll be in the classroom and then we'll be out in the field uh, where we'll actually be in a learning classroom or a learning situation in the field. And we'll walk through just a few of those. When we talk about change, a lot of times we need to know why uh, we're changing from one program to another or one practice to another. Or if we need to change, why are we changing? Is it because of ROI situations or is it because of government programs? One of the things that we find a lot as guys make the change, for instance, into no-till or no-till and cover crops is not being ready for that change. So we're going to talk or we're going to spend time in the field in diagnostic work, seeing if you can identify layers and things that are below ground that would create problems if you were to change into no-till. A lot of times we tell a grower if we're going to go to no-till we need a couple years sometimes to get us prepared to take care of situations in fertility and below ground. So one of the sessions this year you'll be out in the field with the shovels with the probes and you'll be looking for uh, things like soil density layers and hopefully you'll be able to identify those layers that are out there because we need to know where they are uh, to get rid of them. Now what put them in there? past practices we're changing to no-till or reduced till for instance this layer needs to come out the important thing is to get this layer out we need to know it's here that's what this session will be diagnostics you'll be looking at different types of tillage that were done all the way from chisel plow to no-till and see if you can find what restrictions are down there that make root systems go sideways what restricts that water from moving up and down this year at the Corn College campus, we have wheat. It's not a wheat college, but this wheat, of course, will be harvested by the time you get here for, for the event. And we'll be using this uh, ground, this teaching event, to set tillage tools. So we've learned where the layer is, what kind of layers we got, and if we want to get them out of the way so we can uh, get into a vertical system or move into a no-till or no-till with cover system, it's about how do we get them out of the air and how do we get a seed bed prepared for that. So that's what this will be used for. We'll actually have soil pits to show you what tillage looks like done right. And we'll also look at what it looks like done wrong. And we'll be doing live tillage on the day of the event. So many of the tools that we work with or help customers work with are run wrong. So while they're getting there, they're only getting about halfway there. And then we have a problem with the seed bed. And when we have a problem with the seed bed, it goes right back to stand establishment and ear count in the corn. So we will have live tillage, weather permitting here at the site. You'll actually see tools run the way they should be uh, and the way that a lot of them are run that just don't quite get the job done. If you're thinking about making a change from conventional till into a reduced till, vertical till or no till type system. Well, shifting to reduced tillage, let's say strip till or no till, that can be a real game changer in a program. And by game changer, I mean our best ROIs come out of our no till systems, but so do our worst ROIs. So as we're making shifts back and forth within our system, we need the tools to understand that. As we look here today, these are the same hybrid planted on the same day. This is in strip till. 
on, and this is in no-till. Heavy residue situation that we got out here, and that residue creates things like the carbon penalty. So you can see this row is paying a heavy carbon penalty, fighting for its life on nutrients. We've got nitrogen deficiency, we've got sulfur whirl, sulfur striping. The same environment is taking place over here, but with that fall pass with the strip, a freshener pass in the spring, we've made quite a difference in that outcome. We're going to focus on our classrooms out here in the, in the field as well as in the um, hall itself on how we can take this no-till and manage that carbon penalty uh, and get it to look as good as this strip till and have the strip till looking as good as conventional till. So again, some of the tools that we're going to be working with, the four hours of fertility along with soil management and soil structure, they're all going to fit together in making the ROI for a no-till system pony up to what you're expecting in a, your traditional system that you're running now. Today, no matter what you read or where you look, a lot of talk about soil health, climate smart farming, sequestering carbon, and for some people this is exciting uh, and uh, it's a place they want to operate in. Others it's scary because it is big change. We're going to come out here in the classroom in the field and we're going to be looking at different practices on how we deal with cover crop and as we look here we've got cover crop this particular row here is no-till cover crop got a little color change we're uneven in our emergence that's due to temperature that's due to competition from the cover crop and it's due to the carbon penalty that's in play here right next to it same cover crop but we stripped through it last fall and we planted into it. Just by changing that one practice, we got a nice looking stand of corn here that isn't under the same pressure that this is. So for you guys that are thinking about moving in the area of cover crop, especially cover crop ahead of corn, that's a tough spot. That's a tough spot to keep your ROI where you want it to be. We're gonna work on some practices and tools to help you shore that up. We can improve this situation here by managing our four R's of nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus a little bit better and thinking about what we're doing with those applications, especially at the planter. But it's a tough spot to be in and making that change without some tools and some information can get kind of costly in the ROI. This year at the Corn Soybean College, we'll be focusing on management practices that make big differences within the soybeans. And one of those, of course, a lot of growers have already figured out that early planting of the soybean is one of those game-changing events that can move yield 7, 10 bushel. So getting yourself, like in this situation, all the way into our second and third trifolia while normal planting is just coming into the uh, early unifoliate stage, if that. But that comes with a lot of risk, that change does. So we're going to try to prepare you for what kind of risks are involved? You can't eliminate them all, but you can you can uh, work around a number of them. And then we're going to try to incorporate that into the management practices that take place out here. Everything from row spacing to cover crops to no-till within the soybean itself. And then focus on plant characteristics. Similar to what we're doing within the corn program as we're looking at hybrid characteristics. In this case, we're looking at plant characteristics. And how did that how does that fit in with row spacing, early planting, herbicide programs, weed management in there? So we're looking at beans that have a more of a tendency to branch versus those that are more straight, um, straight beans and don't branch that much. What management practices can you implement from tillage to cover to no-till to hybrid selection to row spacing to population that are going to make those differences in the ROI on the soybean crop? Here at CropTech, we have a saying about a change reaction, kind of like a chain reaction, meaning when uh, a grower thinks he's only changing one thing, a simple change, and that causes a chain reaction of events that go through the whole system that can kind of derail the yield or the ROI at the end. And in our event this year, we're going to be talking about the change reaction. What are some of the things that we have to be careful with when we make those changes? And that's going to involve our for our fertility program. We're going to get into the 
disease side of that equation, a lot of change has taken place across the country due to, for instance, tar spot. How do we manage that tar spot through variety and fungicide applications? What differences could it make? But we don't want to make a change in our system specifically for tar spot and miss something else that we've been taking care of all along. So again, it's a mixture of all the different things that are coming at you guys today is to be thinking about making those changes. Doing the same thing over and over again does typically bring you the same results. And when we make those changes, that's where we see the biggest train wrecks when somebody's moving from one system to the next and doesn't know all the things that are ahead of them. So our job is to teach you about this change, some of the things that we've learned through the School of Hard Knocks, through our plots, through other growers to share with you that we need to be on the lookout for. So again, we're gonna be here for the Corn Soybean College event, July 25th, 26th. It will be recorded. A lot of it will be recorded best we can. So there will be a virtual event January, and that's uh, come with a lot of popularity. So we're gonna continue to do that. For you guys that can't make it here to our event, July 25th, 26th, you can enroll for the virtual Corn College January, where we will replay a lot of this and we'll have a live Q&A discussion going on there. Plus we'll add some results from these mini plots that we harvest throughout the year. Those of you that come to the live event, you uh, with that live event comes the virtual event too. So you can think about it all summer and, and in January you can sit down and review what you saw here at Plus C, uh, any of the yield advantages or disadvantages that we were able to record. So again, excited to see everybody back here on July 25th, 26th for this year's Corn Soybean College.